Okay, so what we're going to do in this lab nine is we are going to learn how to represent machine failures or resource breaks or anything that can affect the operation of your resource. So if you know that a maintenance is going to be done, it's going to be done on the machine every six hours, you can represent that using the failure logic. You can also represent that using the schedule log logic for or capacity schedule logic for, for your resource. But in terms of representing if a unexpected failure of your machine, for that type of case, you might need to use this logic that you're going to learn today. Again, if you employees are taking bathroom breaks without at a different times of the day, you can also represent that in, as part of your logic using the, the concept that we are going to learn this morning. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight to the new material. I've been adding slides to this course uh, presentation throughout the semester, so everything is organized in terms of the topics that we are covering. So this is a very good source of information for you in the future if you need to uh, refresh your memory in terms of the concepts of ARENA. So today, uh, resource failures, basically, again, we are going to be representing any failure that might can affect your, your capacity in terms of your resources. So this is going to be defined under advanced process or the module advanced process in ARENA. And that, will, that in particular is defined as, as one of the items that is uh, like a small spreadsheet format. Uh, allows you to define the expression in terms of multi-dimensional aggregates, so you can define the expression for multiple employees, multiple machines. Uh, for example, employee one, employee two, and employee three have different processing times, so you can use an expression to store the processing time that we did in the in the lab that we just discussed. Okay, so failures can be defined in, in, in a similar way. And you're going to be providing a name for the failure. So if you have multiple um, failures affecting your system, you have a name for each one of them. And you need to specify how the failure will occur. So there have two options. One is you can account the occurrence of a, a particular event. So let's say you're processing 100 parts, and then after 100 parts, you know a failure is going to happen. So that's one way to define when the failure is going to happen, and that's name as count. So count by occurrence how many uses until the failure happened. Or you can define it by time, which is a time interval, uh, most likely a probability distribution that is going to tell you based on the observations that we have made of the system, failure can happen every 20 hours following an exponential distribution. So that's another way to represent these uh, time intervals between failures. So you also have to define, in addition to the time intervals between failures, how often and how much it's going to take in terms of time to see the next failure. You also need to define how long is it going to take for you to repair such uh, failure in your system. And that can also be a deterministic uh, value or can be defined by a probability distribution. Okay, so uptime units can be in seconds, minutes, and hours, and days. Um, uptime is the state only. So you can define what is the state that you want your system to go back to operation, so that can go back in a busy state or in, a, in an idle state. You can define that uh, also for your system. Um, downtime is how long is the machine down. Downtime is also in terms of 
uh, minutes, hours, seconds, and days. So you have those options as well. When do we use faders? Uh, some examples here. Workers go on a break. Machine breakdown. Um, machine needs to schedule maintenance. An employee gets sick and leaves work. So a lot of things can happen. You can model those using this uh, logic. So these are all methods in which the resource can fail. So must think about the problem to determine how to classify a resource failure. Okay, so very simple um, way to represent this. Again, the most important part here will be that you get the, the right information from the system so you can model um, with the data. You can represent that correctly. Uh, in terms of the example that we are going to be able to, to show you how to use this logic, we're going to refer back to the example that we worked on last week. Uh, so we're going to edit that example. So hopefully you have a copy of your example somewhere in your computer. If you don't, let me know. I can share my example with you. But again, what we have here is a, is a system that has two, uh, two machines uh, with 50%, uh, yes. so 50 of the time they will go to machine one, the other 50 will go to machine number two, and you have three chairs, you have uh, the times in which each machine is operating throughout the day, and uh, we have the maintenance, and we know how to how to model that already. Have the number of replications. Something new that I want to show you here is the use of warm-up period. So we're going to represent the warm-up period today for the first time. So the, the warm-up period basically is a time of the simulation model from time zero to the time that you specify in which you are not going to be collecting any data or performance of the system. Basically, what you're trying to do is you want the systems to, to warm up to steady state. And then at that point, you're going to start getting the information from the system. What happens when you don't do that is if you get some initial data from the, the beginning of the simulation, sometimes that doesn't necessarily represent the, what's happening in the system. So for example, go to a store, and the store opens at 8 o'clock, and you're the first customer, obviously you're going to navigate that store very fast because there's nobody there, and when you get to the line, the, the pressure is going to be empty, so you don't have any waiting time and so on. That not necessarily represents the typical operation of the system. So that's why you try to eliminate that beginning or that first part of the collection. So you wait until the system is warm up, you have a state, more steady state operation in terms of, oh, now you have a line form, so you dial, you can get how, how much the customer is waiting and so on. So that's the idea. Um, so we're going to, I know you have seen that before in the setup of your experiments, but today we're going to implement a warm-up period. And and we also have the, the failures, right? Because here we have the time between failures for both machines represented by the y goal distribution in hours with 39.5 and then the mean time to fix the failure is represented by a dot normal with 1.5 in hours. Okay, so do you have access to your example from last time? Please check. If you don't, let me know. I'm going to open my file. Okay, so I think I'm going to need to use a different computer for the example. Uh, maybe I can just represent the, because I'm using the, the, the 
student version and I have a pretty quick. Uh, but for the purpose of the video, I'm going to sorry, I'm going to to show you the logic, even though I'm kind of on the, the system because I'm using the student version. So the logic here. Um, So again, what I'm going to do is you're going to go to advanced process and you're going to, to the advanced process module and you are going to find failure. Click on top of that. And then this spreadsheet or this sheet right here is going to show up. So what you're going to do is you're going to add a new failure for your system. So I'm going to call it, you can give it a name, I'm going to call it machine failure. So based on the description of the example, what type of failure are we going to define? Is it a count or is it a time? It's time, okay? Because we have a probability distribution defining the time for the next failure. So in probability and statistics and in reliability research, most of the time when you are trying to predict the mean time to failure of a system, most of the time you will see that a Y-fold distribution is fit to that specific uh, event. So that's the case for this example. So Y-fold distribution is a, one of those distributions that is used a lot to predict the failure of a component or the failure of a machine in reliability. And so we're going to use the time. And the uptime is going to be the time between failures. So how, how long would the system will be up running until the next failure? So we're going to use a Y-Bow 30 and change the time units because it's, it's already in hours. And then we, we can define the downtime, meaning that how long is it going to take for you to fix the, pro the problem in the system. So in that case, that is defined as the mean time to fix the failure, which is a log normal 1.5. And it is also in hours. Okay, so the figure is now defined. Now we need to link this information to our resource. Okay, so we go to the resource module. So that's under basic process. If you go to resource module, you will have an option here to define the failures. So is that column read the green column under the resource basic process? You can go to here and you can click for each one of them. So if you have for the first machine, I'm going to click for that. I'm going to add a row and I'm going to assign that the machine failure that we just defined, so that's the name. And we have other 
things that we can define here, remember the rules that we covered last time. We can also define that for the pair. Okay, so it, it's kind of interesting that we have the options because obviously if a failure happens, you are going to stop what you're doing. But remember, we can also use failure to represent breaks, bathroom breaks or breaks for your resources. So most of the time, and again, it's not necessarily true, most of the time if you're going to go and take a bathroom break, you're going to finish what you have on hand before taking that break. So that also gives you the option to represent that uh, in your system. So for now, we're just going to keep it as ignore, because it's the default. And I'm going to do the same thing for the second machine. So I'm going to use the same failure, machine failure, and ignore. Okay, so now you can go check your model. Shouldn't have any warnings. So let me know if you if you have any problems. And again, I'm not gonna be able to run it in this computer, but you can try to run it in your machine. And let me know if you have any problems. What I can do, obviously, that's going to change my results. I can change my arrivals. Or maybe, yeah, every time, every two hours. Run it. Maybe if I increase this a little bit, so three point two hours. Okay, so I, I changed from 5 to 10. That's not generating all the, the entities that would make my, my, my model fail. So, yes. So, we have the web. Average web at the end of the day. 1.68 in my case because my, my numbers are, uh, the arrival times are higher. Uh, but that's their whole idea. Um, by modeling the failures, you can represent that interaction with your system. Since we have some time, I, I would like to spend some time showing you some of the things that you can do in terms of the animation. And maybe you can consider doing this for for your uh, for your project. So, over here, let me know if you have this bar, this toolbar access, accessible in your, your software. There's a toolbar here that has a small clock, a date, and then some graphs. So, if you do have it, then you're okay. If you don't, let me know. So what I'm going to do is to show you how to animate a resource in your system. So if you go here, there's a there's a four items in this toolbar that are kind of green. The second one, if you put the arrow on top of it, it will say resource. If you click there, 
is going to open this um, window. Okay, so in that window, we are going to define a picture to represent your machines. So I'm going to use machine one first. Okay, so from here you have four options. You can define idle, busy, inactive, and fail. What picture are you going to use to represent each one of those states for your machine? So if you don't select, if you keep the, the default, the machine is going to be represented by a square with different colors. But you have multiple options here. Um, so for example, this library that I'm using right now is called Basic Process. And in this library, there's multiple items, cars, computers, presents, and so on. We can also add, we can open other libraries from the system. So if you go here to Rockwell software, Got to be somewhere here. Hmm. Weird. There's supposed to be multiple libraries for for the for the animation. Maybe there's a different Folder. Let me go to program files. So I'm going to find it, maybe, no, should be here under template, not here, okay, can you try in your machines and see if you can find the library, no, no library, that's weird. Okay, so I'm going to have to check later, but the idea here is if you open other libraries, which are not, oh, why not, they're not here, they will have libraries specifically for machines, and you can select different pictures for different states of your machines. So we'll try that later. Um, but for now, let, let's just use the default. So if I click OK, it will give you the option of setting that square in your model. Okay, so I will name this machine one. So let me write that somewhere. 
So I'm going to use this text option. I'm going to name this machine one. And I'm going to put it on top of that square. And now I want to do the same thing for the second machine. So I'm going to look for machine number two and click OK. And I'm going to set up here. Okay. And let me write this machine two. So I have my two machines. Maybe I should put them in parallel to each other. So another thing that you can do, again, this is very simple animation. We can go further here, do very nice things. Is you can pull this cube from your process block in front of the of the machines. So I'm going to pull that one and then this one here. So now you can represent the arrivals to one of to each one of the machines using this animation. Um, so let's try to run this, see how it looks like. Um, run control. I'm going to keep the animation option now because I want to see the animation. So I'm going to run this. So now you see the machines changing state. At some point, they should go to fail. You see, there's a machine failure right there. You see how the units are moving. So now, machine back to operation. Machine failure over here. I'm not sure if that's the failure or it's just the downtime. So it's a downtime, and when it gets spread, it's 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 thin. Okay, so machine is down, parts will activate, machine is go off, unit is going to go down. Okay, so <clears throat> in addition to that, we can have some statistics. For example, I want to plot the only variable that we have. So I'm going to add a series of, so this is, I'm going to change the name. This is going to be the web. So I want to represent the web in my system. And you can do some editing of the of the graph. If you want to change the colors and, and so on, you have those options. Um, so it says one. And I need to define the expression under the name. So right now we only have an expression defined for the whip. So I'm going to use that one. So maybe I need to change this to something else because it's going to give me an error. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to set up that graph.
it didn't show up the way I expected. So let me do this again. So it's with in system and the expression is with. Okay, so now is the graph. So if I run this now, it will get you the web of the system while you're running it's the scale that's 10, 20, goes down, and again. So it's really uh, interactive with the internet of the model. Something else that you can add is the time of the day. You can also add the date. And then run it. The time would show. So, if you spend all this time on it, it will give you a very nice representation of the system. And we'll go back to this at some point uh, before the end of the semester, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the type of things that you can do. Um, there's things that you can do in your but for those, you're going to have to spend a little time by yourself. Um, you can represent this in a first 3D fashion as well. So 3D models is also um, an option in Arena. We don't have a lot of library options for the 3D uh, animator version, uh, but there's also something that you can uh, do. So, any questions? So, I think I'm going to stop here. Uh, I will stay here until 9. If you have questions about your project, you can come talk to me. Um, if I need to stay longer than that, I'll do it. I want to be available for you to ask me questions if you have. If you don't, you can start working on your assignment. It should be available already on, on tracks.